How are you this evening? Uh, I hope you had a restful afternoon. Welcome to the fourth, it is a eh? first, second, fourth session, second last session for this beautiful Jeffrey's Bay Mighty Men. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody's support over this weekend. Um, I've picked up something that might belong to you. If you've lost a wallet, please, man, get hold of me after the service. And uh, if you don't know, we do have a couple of vendors. Um, who of you have seen the life ball? Uh, no, some of you. Now, if you haven't, uh, there at the vendors, there is a couple of these balls. Uh, JP, do it. Arnu, do it. Come on, Mr. Cup, do it. Whose ball is that? Play nice, boys. Play nice. All right. Congratulations with your ball, and then he gives it away. <laughs> well, well, well. I just want to invite you to the vendor area. There's some lovely snacks, stuff to eat. Please go ahead and uh, bless yourself with that. But uh, I also want to ask, Zane, this, uh, this morning I informed you that there's a book from Zane Mears called Daddy Come Home. There was a couple of these books at the prayer ministry tent. I think six of them. Um, it actually belongs to Zane. Um, please, if you have taken it, can you return it or buy it? <laughs> that was just a friendly request. Now that I've done all the finikis, tell me who's got the balls. Let me just see. Please, you need to share uh, the look of that ball to the guys. Uh, and I know you guys can't get it. Uh, those guys in the blue shirts, they don't deserve it. Uh, they have to work harder for it. Mana, what a lieflijke, lieflijke middag. I've seen today miracles on miracles on miracles. I've seen uh, men turn around for Jesus. I've seen the, the cripple walk. <laughs> uh, couldn't speak, speak. I uh, saw miracles today. Can we give the Lord Jesus a praise offer? <laughs> Our God is good. Glory to the name of our Lord Jesus. Tell me, what do you think of Midpoint? Have they, have they done it? Yeah, they're just part of the brothers. I just want to tell you, um, I see some of the guys that I had the privilege to minister to. And I just want to thank the Lord for, for little Ryan. Don't know where he is. And young Kyle, young boys, young men. He says, I just want to serve Jesus. And the Gerard would say, I will the Lord. That's all what I will do. If you've made that decision, I'm telling you, it's the best decision you've ever made. Can we imagine a Oki eight years back? Oki, eight years back. Lost, broken. And look what God is doing through him. And then came Zayn. Zayn reminded you that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, lives in me and you as kings, priests, and prophets. And that's the same spirit that raised the dead Oki to life. And that same spirit can live in you to go into your community, into your house, for you to make that difference. Let's bring glory to the King. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! Then sings my soul. My Savior 
sings my soul then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings our voices up and now great
There's no one else we will run to except you, Father. You're the one that gives us hope and joy and peace in the chaos, Lord. Thank you that we can run to your arms and find peace in you, Lord.
Jesus, let's speak him out tonight of every circumstance. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Because I know there is peace within your presence. Speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break. Jesus on the mount, 
Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, come on, let's shout it out, shout Jesus from the mountain, shout Jesus from the Jesus in the streets, oh, Jesus in the darkness, over every enemy, oh, Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus, your name is power, your name is he. want to speak the name of Jesus in this place. Yes, Lord, there's no other name. Yes, the name above all names. There we are. Let's just shout out the name of Jesus. Jesus. What a mighty king. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, Lord, we come tonight and remind ourselves of the cross. We cast our minds on Calvary, Lord. Where you came and you bled and you died and you gave your life. And in, with our mouths and with our lives and with everything that we do, we want to bring you praise tonight, Lord. Not just in this moment, but every step that we take from here. Holy Spirit, come and close your truth in our hearts tonight. You don't have to do this alone.
You made a way for us, Jesus, on that cross. Tonight we want to celebrate that, Lord. You are the way maker. Even when it seems to be no way, we know that you are the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you, Jesus, that you love every man in this place so much. And I want to pray, Holy Spirit, that your peace will come and rest in every heart and every mind and shut down and quiet down every fear of the enemy because you are the way maker. Your word is filled with promises. And you are going to come through for us. We trust in you. Thank you that you give us your Holy Spirit in this place tonight, in our hearts and in our lives as a reminder and a seal that you are coming back to fetch us. But until then, who will wait with our eyes fixed on you, Jesus? You will make a way. Yes, Lord.
who you are You're the light in the darkness Promise keepers keepers. We choose to worship You alone You alone alone. Come on, quiet down our minds Every lie of the day Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. We trust in you and you alone. You will make a way. Stop working Even when I don't feel
And he asked, who sent you? And he said, I am. Send me. The song makes me think of where you tell the enemy, my God has called me to take a stand. And the enemy has the audacity to ask you, who sent you? And you say, I am. He is the great I am. Lord, I pray that you will meet them at their need. Every single one of us, Father. Jesus. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can we take our seats, brothers? Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, 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 wow. It is my honor and privilege to call on to stage all the way from Krugersdorp, born and raised, very proudly, a, a very proud product of Krugersdorp. Um, he says 50 years already. He is also happily married to a woman. You're going to hear a lot about her. But I think the best person to tell you more about himself is Mornay Venter. My brother, can you please come not to come? Jelle zal vandaag zien dat dynamiet komt en klein pakjes voor. Blessings, brother. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, gentlemen. I greet you this evening in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Messiah. Emmanuel, God with me. And my prayer this evening is that everything that I say, everything that I do, will be led by the Holy Spirit. John 4.24 says that God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But I'm going to ask you this evening just to, just to relax and just to close your eyes and just to take a deep, deep, deep breath. As I just go down on my knee and just ask Holy Spirit to lead me in spirit and in truth. Heavenly Father God. I can do nothing without you. And Father, you know the intent of my heart when I go down on my knees. It's not because other people are doing it, Lord. It's because I know who my Abba is. You're my daddy. You're my father. Jesus, you're my brother. Holy Spirit, you dwell within me. And that's why my lips this evening, Father, I pray that you will touch it. With the call of your altar, Lord Jesus, touch my lips and touch my heart. Come and burn whatever you want to burn into our hearts this evening. Truth and nothing except the truth in Jesus' name. And we all agree and we say amen. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand. Hallelujah. I'm so privileged and honored to be here this evening. Uh, I don't, uh, sorry, I don't want to offend anybody, but really, um, thank you, Philip, and thank you, mighty men, Jeffrey's Bay, for the opportunity to be here. Um, but I don't like talking about myself. I like talking about the one that saved me, and his name is Jesus. Jesus Christ is more real to me than me greeting you with my hand and saying afterwards that I, I've actually touched you because um, of what he's done in my life. Not what he's only done, but what he's still doing. And I'm so excited about what he's going to be doing in your life. And that's why I want to ask you this evening, man of God, uh, do you know about Jesus or do you personally know him? Do you know about Jesus? Have you heard about what he has done in the Bible? And uh, you can tell me all these miracles that he's done, but there's a massive difference in knowing about somebody. You know, I can go and study about George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, and I can tell you a lot of things in history books. But when I look at the life of Jesus, when I look at the life of Jesus, it's a living word. It's not a history book. It's a living word. The word, the, 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 the written word must become rhema in your life. It needs to become rhema, rhema in your life. And that's when you totally come to a place of falling in love with the word of God. And that's why, if you will allow me, I just want to share a short testimony of my own life. I know it comes at a ma as a massive shock to you this evening, um, but I'm 50 years old. Can you believe it? I look about 25, 30 years old, but I'm actually 50. Praise the Lord. Who's laughing there? But yes, praise the Lord. No, gents. I'm 50 years old, very happily married. Oh, I'm so blessed. You know how, what a massive privilege and honor it is this evening to stand on this, on this platform and to know that the most accountable person in my life is my wife. And she has released me, my brothers. I'm not standing there with, standing in front of you this evening to say, wow, look at what I've done. But I'm going to tell you, to have a covenant partner and to have her as my accountable partner in my life makes a big difference in ministry. Knowing that she prays for me. And you know, I've heard it so many times at Shalom Farm when Uncle Angus stood at the front and he spoke about Tani Jill always protecting his heart and praying for him and releasing him. Sometimes also coming to say, listen, Angus, I don't want you to do this. And then he needs to listen to it because we as men, we battle to hear sometimes. But this evening I'm standing here as a very proud husband of a wife that have been with me for the last 26 years. We've been married for 26 years. We've been together for 33 years. School love. Also as a proud father of two sons, Brendan and Nathan. Brendan, 26 years old, and Nathan, 18, just matriculated last year. One is studying to become an accountant. The other one is playing rugby down in Stellenbosch. And we come out of a town that is known as Devilsdorp. Now in the name of Jesus this evening, I want you to agree with me. Krugersdorp is not Devilsdorp, it's Jesus Dorp. Amen. Amen. Say after me, Krugersdorp belongs to Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. Not what Netflix and and Panas, I don't care who says what, who's the producer of that program. Kruger's door belongs to Jesus because you must understand, if I can just sit down with you and tell you what's happening in Kruger's door. That's why the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He hates what's happening in Kruger's door because there's massive revival taking place. You know what's the most amazing thing, I mean, listen to this. The most amazing thing is that the body of Christ is starting to take hands. Hey, us brought different denominations and stuff. We don't worry about that. Do you know Jesus? And next level, do you, do you know Jesus? And are you, your life showing that you're making him known? I'm going to say it again. It's not good enough just to know him. You need to make him known. Because you've been called to be a disciple. You've been called not to be your pastor or your uh, evangelist or your apostle in your life or your mentor. You are called by your name. And God has called you for a specific purpose, a specific anointing that you need to carry. And that's why this evening I want to tell you, if the sun sets you free, you're a truly free man of God. You know, I was so humbled when I saw the lineup of speakers for this weekend. And you won't believe it, but one thing that I truly battled with for many years was inferiority. At the age of 26, I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ through my dad because my father stood in front of me, in front of 400 men. And he taught me as a little boy, growing up in the apartheid system of South Africa, 
Because he didn't have a father, he said to me, Murray, you know what? Number one, we, this color skin, it's the only color skin that counts in this country. Anything except this color, it's rubbish. And I was brought up that way. And do you know what happened? At the age of seven, I was introduced, six years old, I was introduced to pornography. And the spirit of lust came into my life. I was tampered with as a little boy, small little boy, by Sangoma. Spirit of lust entered my life as a small little baby boy. Inside it's, uh, in grade one, I was sitting in my grade one class and the teacher came. One day she came to, my, to the front of my desk and she said, Monet, I'm just using an example. She said, Monet, two plus two is what? And I sat there and I was so overwhelmed with all the attention upon me. And I looked around and the class started laughing. And she stood in front of me and she went like this. She said, yeah, you see, he's like a stupid. And she did this. You know what happened? That day, the spirit of inferiority came into my life. Because I believed the lie of the enemy that I was stupid. So at the age of six, seven years old, these things were hunting me. But you'd see the thing that was the, that was the, the strong man in my life was fear. Fear. Freeze. And that's why 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1.7 says, it doesn't say God hasn't give us, given us fear. It says God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. And I'm going to go a little bit deeper this evening. I don't want to go into deep theology. But it's important for, for you to understand something that when I sit and I do home visits, when I sit and talk to a family or I talk to a mother and father or I do visits, then I ask the people, do you understand what's happening in the spiritual realm? And then they say, yeah, you, you know, we understand a little bit because we know Ephesians 6 that talks about spiritual warfare and what's happening there. But as soon as I tell them, but listen... Take your Bible and read with me. Principalities and powers and spiritual rulers of darkness, of this wickedness, of this day and age. All of that. It's like they get uncomfortable. Because they don't read the word. They don't allow the word, the spirit of God to, to teach them what the word is truly saying. And then I ask that, that gentleman, that pa, that daddy to sit and say, listen, read with me the following verses. And as they read it, all of a sudden it becomes rhema. And I understand, listen, we're not in a fight. And that's what I want to start, start off with, first of all. You're not in a fight, man of God. You're in a war. Yes, in a warlock. You're in a war. And we have this pity party mentality sometimes in Christianity. You know what? Give me another shot on this, on, this, on this cheek. But if you know who you are in Christ, and He starts working not only in you, but through you, things start changing in a massive magnitude. It changes from glory to glory because it's no longer you, but Him. So I went to high school. At the age of 12 years old, they, they saw I had very good talent to play rugby. So I played Craven Week primary school, high school, went to a very prominent uh, rugby school. And um, yeah, played four years first team. Now you may ask, why did I play four, four years first team? Can I tell you why? Because I did stand at seven twice. I so slim, I got 14. I'm so clever, I did stand at seven twice. And that day, when I got home with my report card, was the first time in my life, because my ne dad never spoke. He just came in and he said, what's happening? What, what's happening? Where's your report card? And I was waiting, not only for judgment, but I was waiting for, for him to punish me. But you see, the Lord started changing his heart. And he came into the, 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 the down the um, gang of gestap, and he said, Mornay, you know what? Quickly come, let's go to my room. And I took my report card, and I sat next to him on his bed. And he said, give me your report card. And he opened it up, and at the bottom said, sorry, but Mornay needs to do stand at seven for a second year. And I sat there, and I was waiting for the, for the, for the, for the punishment. But you see what happened is the Lord started changing my dad's heart. Because he taught us a man never cries. So he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, you know what? You'll go back to the same school and you're going to face the music for what you sowed. You're going to reap in life. You don't run away. We're not going to put you in another school. You're going to face it. And for the first time in my life, my dad touched me on my shoulder and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said the following words. He said, my son, I've got your back. Gentlemen, that next year, then at seven, I ran out for the first team because of a father a dad whose heart started changing. It wasn't at that stage even in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. 
You see, what happened is he changed from religion to relationship. And I sat there and I thought to myself, you know what? My dad actually has got my back. And um, yeah, I played first team for four years, played Craven Week after school, could choose where I wanted to go and study. Universities, technicons. And a very famous springbok with the name of Gary Garmesaisen came and he gave us a few contracts. And we were about four of our school that went over to Witztechnikon. And that year we had an amazing year, um, even beating Rao, uh, UJ University Rao in those years. And then just as I made the S under 20 Technicon team, just before the final, uh, before we left for, for the UK, um, I was injured very badly on my left knee. I um, had a terrible uh, knee injury. And all my friends went overseas and they came back. And after three injuries, they said to me, my knee will never be the same again. They don't think I must play rugby anymore. I was 20 years old, lying in my hostel room. And gentlemen, I didn't know who I was. Never smoked at school. Yes, boozed and loved chicks. But I didn't know who I was. And a young guy came past, the Englishman, I'm a Burki. And he came past and he said, hey, dude, you just need some of this. And I won't say this, the word that he mentioned, but he said, you just need some of this. And he handed me a joint. And I took that joint and when I pulled it, I coughed. And after that, everything just changed. Three months later, I was hooked on Roy Bart. Roy Bart to cat, cat to coke, crystal meth, rocks. And for seven years, I lived that life. Drugs, sex, rock and roll. Went to church, even got married two years before I got saved. And I was living this double, double life. And all of a sudden, with the money and with the drugs and everything, the body started changing because now you've got the bucks. So I started using juice, some steroids, and growth hormones. And I was looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. And gentlemen, August 2000. My dad, what happened with him then is in this whole season of, season of his oldest son's life, he saw he, the Lord started changing my dad's heart. That heart that was so bitter, that heart that, that had so much racism and hatred in his heart, his heart started to grow very soft. And the Lord actually came and did a heart transplant. He took that heart, that hardened heart out, and he gave him a heart as soft as wool. And luckily at that stage, because my brother was also completely gone, we were both involved in the cult. But at that stage, when he wanted to retaliate and do something and sort it out with his fists, luckily the Lord said to him, no, you know what you need to do is, you need to pray for them and you need to love them. Listen to this, not with your love, Gert, but with my love. So the Lord started journeying with my dad and my dad saw these things that we were busy doing. And he came one, one afternoon, he said, you know what, Mornay? Tomorrow is Friday, but I would love you to, to just join me for a weekend away with a few men. Luckily, he didn't say Manakamp or, you know, a men's breakaway. He just said, let's just, just a few guys. We're just going to have a, a lack of time down there, in, uh, up there in Nelstrom. So we came to Nelstrom, and I had the audacity to put in four cases of beer in the back of his boot. And I had my stash with Koran papier, newspaper, lacquer, you know, because we don't want any damp on that, that, that white stuff, you understand. So I hid everything underneath and I put it in my dad's boot. And we got to this place. And when I got out, everybody was walking like, you know, the jeans with the, with the fellies and the khaki shirts. And, hello, Buddha, how are you? Hey, brother. Yeah, welcome. And I thought, what's this? Who's your Buddha? What's your brother? I'm not your brother. And nobody swears, nobody is busy with things that I'm busy with. Because every time that I go to the toilet and I'm busy just quickly... He making a line or just, just one, you know, just a gram of something that some people will open up the window and everything will blow, blow away. So by the second I started having, you know, and tracking some to him, you know, like I just need something. I just need a guy. I just need to just down a few beers because nobody's drinking. This it's, it's like I'm not in the right place. And I went to my dad and I said, Dad, what are we doing here? What's this? And he said, no, you know what? You'll see this evening. That was Friday night. Gentlemen, the next moment, Innes and Frana Bernardi came out. I didn't know them at that stage. You and Innes were singing, Anika Wam, Tanika Wam, with this beautiful face and his blue eyes. And I thought, what is he? What's going on here? I'm not smoking. I'm not using drugs at the moment, but they look like they're smoking. They flip an eye, man. What's happening here? Didn't understand it. 
gentleman, and I hated it there that Friday, that Saturday. And about 11 o'clock, Sunday morning, Herman Ace was the guy that did those, those, those um, men's camps. And uh, he came to the front and he said, I want to give an opportunity for anybody that's here this weekend to come and give a testimony of what the Lord has done in their lives for this weekend. And I sat there and I thought to myself, please just finish off. And as I was sitting there, the next moment I looked at the front and my dad was standing in front of about 400 men. And he took the mic out of Herman's hand and he said, I want to thank the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, for allowing me to have the privilege to have my son here this weekend, my oldest son. He said, well, no, don't you want to come and stand next to me, please? Sure. Now, you must know I'm full of pride. It's all about me, the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I standing there in front. How can that tension be now on me, you know, because I'm all right. But you see, that was something that was bred in my life until today. My dad's 80 years old. That I always, always, always respected my father and my mother. Always. I respected them and I honored them. And I stood up and I went to the front. And as I stood next to him, for a second time in my life, my dad put his arm around me. This time, not just touching me, but put his arm around me. He said, well, nay, I want you to please this evening, or this morning, I want you to look me in the eye. And he said to me the following words. He said, well, nay, I know it's very difficult for you to look me in the eye. Now, gentlemen, why do you think he said it was difficult for me to look him in the eye? Because light and darkness can't go together. And I was standing in front of him, and I couldn't look him in the eye, and he looked at me with his soft eyes. And my heart was full of hatred and bad stuff in my life. And I was looking at him, and just like, you know, just swinging, slow and done, just quickly, just glaring at him. And he said, when they look at me, first of all, I'm going to ask you to please forgive me. And when my dad said forgive, something changed in my heart. He said, Monet, I, 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 I taught you, I taught you that a man never cries. He said, Monet, I need you to, to forgive me because the eyes are the windows to your soul, to your heart. And I stood there, and the next moment I just felt this emotion, but everything building up in my tummy, right through my heart, and everything just sat there. And the only thing I needed to do at that stage was just to release. But you know what? Pride is a terrible thing. And I looked at my dad and I looked down and I just swallowed it off. Mm. And I just looked down to the ground. And then my dad pulled me a little bit closer. And he said the following words. He said, Muna, I want to ask you to please forgive me that I've never spoken these words over you. And Gert Andries Venter, 26 years ago, this year August, stood in front of that man, those men. And he asked me the following. He said, Muna, I ask you to please forgive me for never saying to you and telling you that I love you and I'm so, so proud of you. Gentlemen, manna, when my earthly father spoke those words, I collapsed. I fell on my knees and I started weeping. Immediately was a heart transplant that took place because the Lord took out a heart as hard as stone and imparted a soft heart of love, of compassion, of acceptance. All of this immediately happened and I started crying for the first time out of my heart, just surrendering everything. And I just gave it to the Lord Jesus Christ. I accepted him that day as my Savior and my Lord. And since that day till today, it's the best life. There's no better life than this life. I've had plenty of money. I've, I, I, I was never a multimillionaire, but I had a few Harley Davidsons and GTIs and all those nice things that the, the, the world will tell you. It's, you know, if you have it, don't you know, and you've got it. You've got it made. Seven years after I was, I was saved, we went through a storm. You know what happened, gents? I was busy with Bible school. Not an emotional decision, but knowing that there's a calling upon my life. So we started attending a Bible school, myself, my brother, my dad. And the National Credit Act came in in 2007, around about June. And I was a top salesman in the motor trade. And when that act came in, my sales dropped from between 30 to 40 cars a month. It dropped to six and five and seven cars a month. I was living there. Expenses was there. And I only brought in this little bit of money every month. But you know what happened? And we were fasting we were praying, we were trusting the Lord. And even the house that we prayed for was taken back by the bank. The Harleys were taken back. The cars were taken back. And we needed to move in and start off afresh. 
living with my, my mother and father-in-law, with two little boys, we moved to that two-roomed flat. So if somebody tells you that this journey, sorry for the Afrikaans, this Monskane and Ruisa, it's going to be always the best. And you know what? You won't go through difficult times. Gentlemen, I'm telling you today, if I must look back at my journey with the Lord Jesus Christ for the last 24 years, every storm, everything that I went through, was in with the it was worth it. Your character is built in that, those times. Stop praying and asking the Lord to take you out of that storm. Start asking the Lord to take you through the storm. Because you cannot accomplish it by your own strength, by your own ability. But he comes because his word says, my grace is more than enough for you, my child. You know what happened in those times? We grew, grew closer. Myself and my wife grew closer. We started fasting. We started praying. We started reading the word together. We started knowing that the only refuge, the only person, the only one that can help us, I'm going to say it again, the only person, the only person, the only person that I can run to that will never leave me nor forsake me, that will never drop me, is Jesus. And here we stand today. Mighty men, J. 23rd of March, 2024, 7 o'clock service. And the scripture reading for this weekend is 2 Timothy 1.7. Sorry, I don't have lads anymore, okay, but I'm going to try. Fearless. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and of, a, of sound mind. Here's the thing. My brother, what's happening in your heart? What's going on in your heart at this present moment? What's going on in your heart? How's your heart? Can you truly come to a place we can enter his, 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 his presence with thanks and with, with praise and thanksgiving and just fall in front of him and say, Lord, the only thing I can bring you. Because it happens, gentlemen, it happens. Listen, the word declares in Psalms that God has ascended his word above his name. It's too massive, too big for us to understand. But here's the thing. If you're in a living relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he brings you to a time. And I'm, say, I'm not saying you must do it from tomorrow. You need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Where he will say, Monet, I want you. I want to spend time with you. I want you, my, my son, I want you to be into me. And then times comes when he says, put the Bible, put the word for today. Put the word one side. Put your prayers one side. Sit and wait upon me. You know how few Christians can truly do that. What was the sooner of routine? We're in such a root, r- routine of, you know, I need to stand up at a certain. You know what? It's good. It's good to have that discipline. But if you want to really excel and move into a new dimension with the Lord, you know what? I can't, when I, when I travel, whatever I do, I'm constantly praying in the spirit sometimes because I don't know what to say. And I will, I will, I will, at first it was in the morning, five o'clock I will wake up, or four o'clock I will wake up. Then I'll read my word, and then I'll pray, and then I'll, I'll go through the rest of the day. Then I've got this thing of, you know what, I've done my part, I'm, I'm a child of God, it's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. But next level is, if you do that, led by the Spirit, and then you wake up that one morning that you're late, you know what happens? There's for now, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You're not feeling condemned because you know, you know what? I had a, my, 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 my alarm never went off, but you know one thing, I know I'm in a personal relationship with my daddy and he knows my circumstances. And then I rush to Pretoria and the next moment as I drive, I say, yo, Lord, I can't believe I've got 20 minutes to be in Stormfall Avenue, but I know, Lord, you can do all things. Thank you, Jesus. And as I speak, whoop, the Holy Spirit says, I want you to address this and this and this and this. Why? Because I'm in a personal relationship with him. I haven't had time to read the word that morning, but you know what? Because I'm in a relationship with him, he shows me then when my wife is watching a soap or whatever it may, may be in the evening, I will go to the room because there's a prompting. There's a, there's a, the, the, the spoken word, the rhema word dwells within me and I will move to that secret place and I will close the door. And my wife knows when I close that door, if there's something very serious, she'll come and knock. But when she opens the door, she will find me on my knees or flat on my face, prostrated before the Lord. Because he's my first love. Buddha, brother, what's happening in your heart this weekend? Martin came. He turned his back. And he fell into the arms of seven brothers. I think it was seven. 
He fell into their arms because he trusted them. What is the thing that is holding you, that is gripping you? The thing that's in your heart that nobody knows about. Because remember this child of God, that a true Christian, a true child of God, is known when he or she is alone. Not now. Now we can sing, Waymaker, Miracle Worker. Now we can jump in front of the Lord. We can praise Him. Hallelujah. We look quite all right. But what's happening with you when you go to the bathroom with that phone? What's happening with you when you're in a guest house? When that door closes and you put on the TV or you're busy on your laptop and something pops up. I shared with a gentleman last, evening, uh, last night, I said to them that I can't even open my emails anymore. My wife is handling all of that because of the spam that's coming through. So what did I do? How can, you, how can that happen? Listen, guys, the enemy will always try to take you back to your past. And I've come to a place with, with the relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to come to a place to be a true man of God. You need to say, Lord, I need to identify those areas of my life that I truly battle with. But we don't have to talk about it. Because what's going to happen if you're in my church and I start talking about this, this, and this? And the people say, yeah, Yo, you know what? It's all about sin consciousness. Yes, I understand. Some people are just sin, 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 sin. But here's the thing. We're in a war. I said it at the start. We're in a war. And you need to go, man of God, this evening and ask the Lord, what are those areas in your life that you're truly battling with? Is it lust? Is it pride? Is it unforgiveness? Is it hatred? Maybe you can sit here tonight and say, but you know what? I don't have a problem with any person on this earth. There's a contentment in my heart, but you know what? When Jesus comes and stands in front of you with a mirror, and he says, what do you see, my son? You might say a lot last night, the brother saying, I see myself. I believe you're still here, brother. I see myself as a four out of 10, a five out of 10, maybe an eight out of 10. Gentlemen, what was the words of Jesus on the cross? In Hebrew, it's nigmar. In Greek, it's teletestai. In English, it is accomplished. In Afrikaans, it is fulbrang. Jesus paid it all. And he came and he said, you know what? When I look at you as my son Mornay, my brother Kuis, Piet, Jan, Tsepo, who's ever sitting here this evening, when he looks at you because he's, you're his son, he sees you as a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10 because Why? He looks at you through the hands of his, nail, of his son's nail-scarred hands because Jesus paid it all. But to get to that place, you need to acknowledge and stand up and say, listen, I know as I'm standing here, I cannot go to a party or to a social meeting. Why well, no? Because I sense it just like that. Because spirit will always seek spirit. Geest soek geest. Spirit seek, soek, seek spirit. So when I go to a party or after party with somebody, I'm a rugby coach as well. When I come to a place, I can somehow say, hey, this girl is the second or third time, the last half an hour, she's quick, quick to the bathroom. And then it's a unisex bathroom. And as I walk into that place, the Holy Spirit says, you, you need to remove yourself. Because take a guess, if I go into that cubicle where she was beforehand, just take a guess what I, what I, what I find on that toilet seat or one of that, that toilet holder, that, 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 that old contraption. White powder lying there. Might not be a problem for you in your life, but I come out of that life. You know what I do is, I saw take spit and I spook on it and I take toilet paper and I wipe it and I throw it down the toilet and I remove myself because I run to my father. I'm saying, Lord, I'm no longer the old Mornay. What about in your heart having hatred? Gentlemen, I don't know how things here in the Eastern Cape, but really, Gauteng is next level, bro. Gauteng is rough. Now look, we, I remember driving on the road and you know, the taxi will overtake you at 160 kilometers an hour and push in front of you. But now they come this side and on the yellow road, the yellow line, they will pass you. And by the grace of God, because I was always a very aggressive person, by the grace of God, the Lord has taught me, you know what? You don't understand that taxi driver's hours that he's been working. You need to have grace for him. You know what? Slow down. Allow him to go in front of you. Don't get involved with it. If he says something, whatever, if he looks at you, bless him. Not bless him with arrogance. Bless him with the love of Jesus Christ. You see, aggression, drugs, 
What about pornography and lust? Yeah, my neighbor, but you know what? It's not that bad. I'm not going to that extent. <laughs> Gentlemen, I shared with men last night in that white tent. A few of us were sitting there and I told them that I was so deeply involved and so deeply consumed by pornography and lust that the Lord showed me that the next step would have been homosexuality. Do you think it's easy for me to stand in front and tell you, act a man, I'm a man. And I had thoughts going that direction. But you see, it's something that the Lord has brought in my life. By the grace, by His grace, grace He said, Monet, I want you to live a Galatians 2.20 life. What is a Galatians 2.20 life, my brother? To come to that place. And it's not by words. That's a place to, to hit your knees, to go down your knees, to say, Lord, I, Ornei Fenter, have truly been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, Lord, but Christ living now within me. And the life that I now live, I live by faith. I live by faith. So, Lord Jesus, come, please. I don't want to go back to that person, that old Ornei. I hate the old Ornei. He's dead. He's gone. Why do I want to go and put his head back? Why do I want to go and revive him? I'm dead. I'm crucified with Christ. Man of God, this evening the Lord is asking you, Galatians 2.20, are you truly crucified with Christ? You know why we don't see wonders, miracles, and, and things happening? Because we have our own agenda. I'm not attacking you. I'm talking about the entirety, the, how I see Christianity. Wherever I go, Lord, three weeks ago to... to um, uh, um, Barclay Vest, we were there with a massive men's camp and then up to Mapumalanga and busy with schools and everything. When you talk about miracles and signs and wonders, they, they look at you, yeah, but you know what? That was in the Bible. But this afternoon, this afternoon, I've only got to know Zane and, 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 and Oki this weekend and I've known uh, Eugene for a few years, for, for, for a few years and Martin and I, the best of everybody here. But this afternoon, there was a miracle that took place. And I'm standing there, and I'm not saying, thinking, Lord, why, why is this happening now? Why didn't it happen in our lives? Because it's happening in my life as well. Mona, you please need to come through to the uh, prenatal ICU. There's a little baby. They say, that, they, say for the, they, they told the parents to come in to pray for this child because the child's on the end. I don't even know the people. I'm sitting there, eating with my family. The next moment, moment there's a prompting of the Holy Spirit, not emotional prompting, the Im prompting of the Holy Spirit. My son, you need to go. Then I get to that hospital. I don't even know the parents. I'm standing outside. The mom and dad's holding each other, and the sister's saying, you know what? You need to prepare yourself for the worst. And when I heard, hear those words, I know that is flesh, and that's not the words that my Jesus spoke. And I will approach those people. And you know what's so beautiful? If you have compassion, if you have the heart of Christ, you'll walk and approach those people. Not, hey, what do you think you're doing? Why are you crying, man? You know, that arrogance. You walk in and you submit yourself. Humble. Hey, sir, sorry, my name is Monet. And I believe that your child's in, in ICU and it's not going well. Yes, and they will say, who are you? And I say, listen, can I just please, just, just please, one minute, two minutes max. Can I just pray for your child? And I haven't had one set of parents that ever said, no, you cannot do it. And there was a little girl that was full of little papies in the keel. And she, was, she looked like a Michelin little person, totally swollen. Parents were standing next to the bed. And as I stood there, I had this little case with bread and a little bit of terosh, driver's up. Grape juice. And as I stood there, I wanted to start praying. And the Lord said, you need to break my body. And you need to eat, uh, drink my blood and break my body, eat my body. And as I stood there, I gave it to the father, to the mother. And as I took that little baby's hand and I put it in my hand, the mother came and she put her hand on top. And the father came and he put his hand on top. And as I put my hand in, on top, we started praying. And there was, there was a prayer of agreement. And I said, Lord, you are the one that gives life. The enemy comes to kill, sin, and destroy, but you came to give life. Two years ago, that little girl, that baby girl, 
matriculated in the school in the table. Not for no Fenter. No man gets the honor. It's him. It's knowing and loving and trusting Jesus. Demon spirits, demonic forces, flee in the name of Jesus. If you want to really give him a sucker punch, you bring in the blood of Jesus. The blood in the name of Jesus. Why don't they swear on the TV, oh, holy, wah, 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 wah. But they will use that name. And we, you can even come now and look in my, my notes, on my tablet, in my, in my backpack, in my sermons, everything that I do. I will never, ever write the name of God, Yahweh, Elohim, Yeshua, Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, anything that refers to the triune God. In normal letters, I will always make it capital because He is holy. That's the God that I serve. I say, my chomi, my friend, my, my, my barini, he's holy. And that's why this evening you can sit here, brother. I'm not here to charge you up or, or to, to say, listen, we need to run out now. And you know what? We, we need to do this and this and this. All I'm asking you, that's what the, the prompting of the Holy Spirit has been doing with me this whole weekend is, what's happening in my son's heart? Monai, tell me, ask my sons, what is going on in their hearts? Is I don't want to start with controversial things here. But I came out of a setup of the sister churches in Afrikaans. And not yet to knock any church or any dominion. But listen to this. I never ever saw people laying hands on somebody. Or tongues or whatever it might be. The gifts of the spirit. I never saw it. I read it in the word. But I never saw it. I was taken out of a, that system. And I still have friends today that's in those churches. Friends, but they're there for a season and the Lord's using them. But I was taken out of that and I was eventually in a setup of the charismatic movement. And I stood there the first night. It was a Sunday night and we had a Holy Spirit late evening. And I couldn't understand it because while we were busy singing, and I actually think Midpoint was singing that one song. I said it, I shared it with somebody. It was in the, in the early 2000s. And as they were busy singing, as they went from this one song to the other song, that, that just that, that intermission, just music playing, there were Tani standing in behind me, Auntie standing behind me. And as the music flowed, I just heard funny voices coming out of them. I thought to them, what's happening here? Tani's geroek. Because the, the song is finished, and all of a sudden they're starting to sing in tongues. I didn't know it was tongues. And then after that, the pastor came to the front and he said, I want to please pray for anybody that wants this and this and this. Not wants this, but has need in these certain areas in their lives. And I stood there and I didn't understand what was going on. And he said, those who truly want a touch of the Holy Spirit, please come to the front. Let us pray for you. And I came to the front and I stood there and I looked down this line and I saw people the whole leadership of the church coming past and anointing people. I never, I didn't know what the anointing was. I didn't understand it. And as he came to me, I was about three or four people, persons away from me. He stopped and he said, I just feel there's a release. The pastor of this mega church stopped and he said, I just feel there's a release. And he came to his second in charge and he said, I want to pray for you to please go on and pray for the people for their need. And I was standing there, I thought to myself, hey, I was looking for your anointing, man. I want you to pray for me in my, in my head. You see, that's what we sometimes do, nah? Let this prophet or that man or that title pray for me. Can I tell you something this evening, gentlemen? If you want to ask me, I can choose any person to pray for me. You know who I'm going to ask to pray for me? Grade one little child to pray for me. That child prays with a sincere heart. And the Lord listens to that heart, the intent of the heart. And I was standing there, and I couldn't understand what was happening. And as this pastor came in front of me, and he lifted up his hand the next moment, the, the, I was so overwhelmed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit that I was on the floor. And I tried with everything to get up off that floor, and I couldn't do it. But listen to this, because this is why I'm, 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 I'm mentioning this. 
as I was lying on that ground, man of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, Bible school, going well, the old things have passed now, I'm, this, I'm on this, 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 uh, uh, hungry for the Lord, you know, I'm, I'm on fire for the Lord. As I was lying down there, the next, next moment, I just heard these words. That phone call that you get once a day from that woman, I don't want you to have that conversation anymore. Get her out of your life. Because you see, it was never a sexual relationship, but it was an emotional relationship. It was a relationship that I kept hidden from my wife. Under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he came. And he said, are you prepared to give it to me? Gents, when I got off that floor, it was the quickest thing that I ever did in my life. I just said, Lord, please forgive me. That next moment, I phoned her before work. And I said, never, ever, ever. Not talk, not chat, not WhatsApps, not SMSs, nothing. Please forgive me for what I've done. She said, but you did nothing. I said, no, I did. I hid stuff from my wife. And today, I'm just going to share this with you as well. Can you go to the bathroom? Can you go and shower? Can you quickly go to the garage or just do the dishes or work outside in the garden or quickly run to the, to the sassel for milk or whatever it might be and leave your phone next to your wife? Can you do it, brother? No, uh, why are you always going with your phone when you bath? Why are you always using your phone when you're going to the toilet? Whatever it might be. Why is your phone always with you? You see, I spoke about accountability. I give my phone at any time to my wife and my sons. Because they know the fruit that I'm bearing. I'm not talking at a place of I've arrived and I'm this high and mighty. I'm talking about whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I went to my wife and I told her, listen, I was involved with, in pornography and lust and all of that. And the Lord came in a massive way and he changed everything. That today, as I started off by saying, today I know I'm released and I know my wife's got my heart. Gentlemen, it's not good enough just to take your wife's hand and to pray for her. Ask her also to pray for you. Ask her to pray for you. Go down on your knees together. Take the Holy Communion. What a powerful anointing there was this afternoon as our brother came and he hit his knees and he just shared the message around the, 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 the communion. It was powerful because you know the Lord. You can sort of see in his heart how he loves the Lord. Our brother from Poland. I was sitting there and the emotions just, I was just totally overwhelmed by the anointing when he hit his knees here on the floor and he just started thanking the Lord for the, the body and for the blood. So brother, you know what, Mornay, it's not that bad. I'm not watching porn anymore, but maybe it's that secretary. Maybe it's that sister-in-law that gives you a little bit more attention, yeah, yeah, in families, than your wife is giving. Maybe it's that person at the workplace that always listens to you. But let's just ask this question. When was the last time that you stood in front of your wife and just said to her, babe, you know what? I just want to tell you, you look so beautiful today. And I love you. I stood there last night with my back against that white tent. And a brother came to me and he said, I've got a word for you. He said, you need to phone your wife now and tell her how much you love her and how much she means for you, to you. Gentlemen, it wasn't even 10 seconds. I was running to that tent and I phoned her. And she immediately, I wasn't even, man, I think it was three or four words into the sentence. I could hear because you know what? There's, there's oneness. There's a unity between my, myself and my wife. And I know today it's only Jesus Christ that can do that. Honor your wives. Speak nicely. Building up words of encouragement. She doesn't want more nay or any of us. To come and tell her, you look so nice today. And gentlemen, you know what's next step? Saying that to her and not wanting anything afterward. Accident for you, see and I'm like, it's here. I want something in return. Brothers, we need to be sensitive with our wives. 
We need to love our wives with the love of the Lord. We need to look at them, listen to them, sit down, even if it's a thing that irritates you. Because the irritation is not her, it's you that are battling with the irritation. So just mellow down and just sit this weekend, go home. After this weekend, just this tonight, go home, wherever you are, Sunday, go home. And just look your wife in the eye and say, babes, you know what, I just want to first of all just come and acknowledge you and say, thank you for who you are in my life. Go down on your knees. Let your tears wash your feet. You will see what the Lord does. He opens up the blindness in your eyes because you, you, you've seen your wife, but you've seen her through your own wife. Yama says, Manet, my fro, you know what? She's always been like that. Says, I'll take quiet. All of that. It's nonsense, man. It's us that are blinded. It's us that are blinded. So, gentlemen, this evening, Is there transparency in your life? Is there accountability in your life? Can you say sorry for your wife if you were wrong? Can you say sorry to your, your children if you were wrong? Just another question. Who do you walk with, brother? Who do you walk with? Who's the five people closest in your life? Very interesting. This is not... So as I would have said in the old days, work hard, I, I agreed. But if you give me the five people that you work with, walk with most in your life, I will very easily get an indication of what type of person you are. My closest person, the person that I walk with on this earth is my wife. Then is my wife. But then after that, it's true men of God that have laid down their lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. That will come to me afterwards and say, you know what, my brother, I heard what you said on Sunday, and I'm not sitting here with a, with a criti critical spirit, or, 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 but I'm sitting here in a place, a place of love. That one thing that you said, I do not agree with you. Or, you know what, I didn't understand that, but everything is done in love. That's how you grow, man of God. This is what you so my question as I start, as I finish off this evening is, have you ever had an encounter with love himself? Het jy ooit een ontmoeting gehad met liefde homself? Encounter with love himself. Because God doesn't have love. He is love. God, Jesus has no love. Jesus doesn't have love. He is love. But now we do, what we do is we, we think, you know what, if you, only this girl can kiss me with those luscious lips, wow, I will melt. Because this is the most succulent, I don't know what I'm but you know, if she can just kiss me, that must be a magnificent kiss of love. My brother, Go to your wife, anoint her, pray for her, repent if there's something wrong in your life. Fall on your knees and ask, Lord, please show me, listen to this, show me how to love my wife. Show me how to kiss her. Show me how to caress her. Show me how to love her. And the only thing, you, the way you can get closer to her is if you spend time with her, if you, you have intimate time with her. Because intimacy starts by speaking, having a conversation. What do you like, my wife? Why do you like Mornay? I love it when you kiss me on my chin. Really? <laughs> we never spoke about it. Have you spoken to your wife about it? Think about it. But we make things so complicated. We make the things so complicated. And here's the thing. When you sit down with my wife, I know exactly today. I thought for many years, maybe for 18 years or 16 years in my marriage, I thought that my wife was one of the most unaffectionate people under the sun. But by the grace of God, today I know she's more affectionate than I am. Touching me, caressing me, playing with my ten hair that I have left. That's the love of Christ. Gentlemen, I want to ask you as you're seated there. Why don't you just pray with me? Just close your eyes as you're seated. Heavenly Father God, it's your son sitting here this evening, Lord. 
It's not my sheep. It's not our sheep. It's your sheep. It's your sons. And Abba Father, I want to pray that you will touch their hearts this evening as they see to dear. To be true to themselves, Lord. Please be true to yourself, my brother. Forget about your um, your brother, your opa, your dad sitting next to you at this present moment. Because the Lord is asking you this evening. Have you had an encounter with me, my son? Not just goose flesh. Not just a quick feeling, but I'm talking about an encounter with love. Because that one encounter with love will change you, my brother, from the inside out. From the binnenkant of, buitenkant of. That's a transformed life. So, man of God, this evening, as we see today, I can't see all the people in front of me. But I want to ask you to respond to this prayer. If you are seated here this evening and you battle with self-hatred, you hate yourself for what you have done or what you are currently doing that nobody knows about, I want you to raise your hand to acknowledge, Lord, there's something in my life that I'm battling with. And that thing is keeping me captive. But this evening, Lord, I'm going to respond by being obedient to you. Not to Murnay, not to one of the speakers here, but to you, Lord. Because listen, man of God, the Lord is holy. He's almighty. And he knows what is hidden in your heart. In the same, exactly the same setting as we're busy praying now. I want to ask you, precious man of God, have you ever considered or are battling at the present moment with self-hatred and thinking of committing suicide? Just raise your hands when you're seated. Just raise your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Those who humble themselves, the Lord will raise up. He will use you mightily, man of God, because the enemy comes, John 10, 10, to kill and steal and destroy. But love himself comes this evening. And he says he loves you. He loves you just the way you are. My brothers, that what was so amazing, so wonderful to even explain to you is that when I fell on my knees, August 2000, in front of the Lord Jesus Christ, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, I heard these, I, I heard these, these, these words, Mornay, I love you just the way you are. I said, Lord, it can't be. I was last night with prostitutes, Lord. He said, yes, I was with you. I wasn't waiting outside, my son. I was with you. I was the one that said, listen to this, man. Listen to this. Don't do this to my daughter. But that spirit of lust, your broken heart, that heart that, that's, that, that Oki spoke about, that heart made you do that. I said, Lord, but what else? What about the criminal activities? What, what about spiking girls' drinks and women's drinks and all of that, Lord, stealing? And He said, I, I love you just the way you are. And then, listen to this. Please, my son, come in. Come in. Allow me to come into your life. Just open up the door of your heart. So, man of God, I want to ask you, those hands that went up this evening and every brother this evening that truly feels that they have burdens in their hearts, that they're carrying burdens. The Lord is calling you tonight to come and stand up and come and stand in the front. Let's pray together. Stand up and come to the front and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you this evening that I can bring everything to you. Forget about every person sitting next to you. It's under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Lord wants to do a great and a miraculous and an awesome work tonight. As the men are coming through, and I, in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit. That spirit of, 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 of comfort. Thy comfort, I even, um, yeah, no, I'm all right. No, no, brother, you're not all right. You're not all right. If you have, if you're battling with that in your life. Self-hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. Being doubtful about, ooh, I hope I will make it one day to heaven. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed, my brother. Lust, 
bitterness, unforgiveness, self-hatred. Putting a gun to your head, choking yourself is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. Come in. Stand up. Be a man this evening. To have this set of biceps and a chest like this and calves and doing a leg press of six, six, seven hundred kilograms is not being a man. Being a man is standing up and acknowledging, saying, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm, I, I need to repent. I will wegdraai van die gemors. I can no longer be driven by this nonsense where the enemy comes to steal. Come in, man. Stand up. There's a man for not. A man is new art, you can slani. A man is how deep you can, low you can go down on your knees. And sometimes, you know what? Prostate yourself like David did, flat on his face. What did David do? He was involved with a married woman. When he was caught out, you know what he did, brother? You know what he did? He went, he said, put the Ryan the first line of the, of, the, of the attack. So the report came back, Uriah is dead. And David thought to himself, Ach, don't get talk. now I can go on because I have this woman in my life and I'm truly in love with her. But the prophet came and he said to him, what? He said to him, what have you done? What have you done? And then David does something, man, and that's why I know I've got a David's heart. Not because I'm great, but by the grace of God. Because David went into his, his chamber and he locked the door. And Bethsaida was already, she was pregnant with a baby. And she was busy delivering and he went down on his face and he prostrated himself in front of the, in front of the Lord. There was nobody seeing him. You know what prostrated is, brothers? I'm going to show you. It's there. It's here. In the form of a cross. In the form of a cross. He cried to the Lord. He said, Lord, please, if it's possible, let us go. Just pause, Lord, please, please, not my child. <laughs> you know what? There was a knock at the door. King David, he said, yes, yeah, speak. He said, the boy, the, the child was born, but there's no breath within. And David came, and you know what? That's what you're doing this evening. And as man of a facet, there's men sitting there because the spirit is showing me. But David stood up. He took off, take, took off that robe. And he went. And he washed his face. And he put on a new ring and a new robe. And he walked out of that place as king. So I want to tell you this evening, I tell you, but often not, every one of you, tonight, I salute you. I salute you to stand up to say, I'm a man of God because I acknowledge that I've sinned in my life. And I want to tell you something today. That if the sun set you free, you are free indeed. I know by the grace of Jesus, of, of the Lord, that if I die now, I know exactly where I am. Not because of who I am, but because of who He is. If you truly understand and know whom the Son sets free, you're free indeed. You know what will happen? If there's altar calls, I'm not talking about this weekend, I'm talking about at churches. I've got people in my own church or now in our congregation. If I talk on a Sunday about this thing, they come to the front. The next Sunday, they do it the same. A month later, they still come for the same prayers. Why? Don't you believe it? Can't you cut that thing in your life and say, Lord, this is Achilles' heel in my life. All right, what is Achilles? If, need, if I need to take Eugene here and we need to brawl now, like was going to betray. If before we start fighting, if I just say, listen, just stop quickly. I take a knife and I snap both his Achilles. Can he stand? Can he stand? Now, can he stand? He can't stand. You need to identify what's Achilles in your life. Young men, young man, have stand, young man. Be man enough to say lust, hatred, voodoo, whatever it might be, all those things that I've mentioned. It's not my portion. My portion is Jesus. Lord, I pray this evening in the name of Jesus. Man, I want you just to open up your arms and just, just extend your hands to the heavens. Lord, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Like a mighty rushing wind, Father, and just blow away the guilt and the unforgiveness and the things that's been, that's been stealing from this man. And man, for us to respond, we need to publicly speak and say that I want to repent. So pray after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, this evening, the 23rd of March, 2024, 
I acknowledge that I'm battling with self-hatred, with, with lust, pornography, bitterness, self-hatred, and, and th- thoughts of, of killing myself. Lord, this evening I know it's not my portion. Jesus is my portion. I'm no longer going to be bound by sin, but by love, by your love, Lord. Not my love. I have limited love, but Jesus is love. I come this evening and I ask you to consume me with your love. I come this evening, Lord, and I turn away from all these things that I've mentioned. And I stand up this evening and I want to enter into that place of true sonship. True sonship. Gentlemen, to sing I'm no longer a child of, of, of fear, but I'm a child of God. Lord, I thank you this evening that there's no, nobody else that can save us, that can set us free except Jesus. So, Lord, we ca- we've come to a place to acknowledge and speak it. And that's why, as you're standing here, as your hands are stretched out, I pray, Holy Spirit, breathe on us. Fill our lungs, Lord, with your ruach, your breath of life. In that ruach, my brother, in that breath of life, is healing, is victory. Victory! In Jesus' name. Whom the sun sets free. Say after me. Whom the sun sets free. Is free indeed. I am a son. Of the most high. My father is ever father. Jesus. Has set me free. Holy Spirit lead me. In spirit and in truth. Thank you Jesus. Just keep your hands like this. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless every brother here, that you will keep them, that you will let your face shine upon them and be gracious to them, that you will lift up your countenance upon them, and may they dwell and live and walk and breathe. (laughs) The shalom peace. Shalom. 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 Blessed are you, Lord, O God, King of the universe, who have ordained your body, your sons, this evening, with the fullness of your love, of your acceptance. Holy Spirit, please help me as I walk off this stage. That people forget me, Lord. It's what you've done. What you've done. I'm no longer bound by fear. I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask all the people, many at the front, to please move to the to the white tent, okay? As you go on, you worship. All of us, let's move to the white tent. Let's go and minister there. As you move, we saw missing together.
no longer I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear For I am a child of God Yes, we are. We are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we know that your word will never return void. Father, when you speak, let us, your children, listen. I thank you for this holy moment. Thank you for every man that stood up and made a decision. Glory. Man, our God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Oh, my seal. Ja, morgen ochtend. Tomorrow morning, we will start at 5 past 10. Uh, 10 o'clock, 5 past 10. On stage, 20 past 10. Your wives are surely invited. Your daughters are invited. Invite a friend. Ladies will enter from around 8.30. Give the gentlemen some time to put something not so smelly on their bodies. And then I just want to remind, I've got somebody's wallet. If you've lost a wallet, please get hold of me. I'll be at this stage for the next five minutes. Then I want to go through to uh, the ministry tent. And also, um, remember the books for our brother Zane. Brothers, have a lovely, lovely evening. And may I ask us, can we run to the Father? Can we? Yes. Rest well. See you tomorrow morning, brothers. <laughs>